Ty Cohen here, and we're back with another amazing Kindle Cash Flow family member interview. Before we get started, as always, I want to remind you to go in, like, comment, share, subscribe to the channel so that you can win some of these awesome prizes. So we have an Apple uh, watch here, as you can see here on the back. As a matter of fact, I actually just had my uh, assistant send some of these AirPods out to one of the one of the guys in the Kindle Cash Flow group who won week before last. We got some MacBook Airs that we're giving away. Um, I think his name is Michael Lopez who won one of these the week before last. Marty and Jack sent that out to him. We got some Amazon gift cards that you can win. And how do you win? You win by going in, liking, sharing, commenting, and most importantly, subscribing to the channel over at kindlecashflow.com forward slash YouTube or the podcast over at kindlecashflow.com Port slash podcast. So now I'm excited. It's about 10 o'clock at night for me right now. And normally right now, what I would be doing is probably doing some market research on Amazon's Kindle platform, or maybe screwing around watching the show with my wife or something like that as uh, she's watching it and I'm sneaking around on my laptop doing some work. But tonight we've got a special guest in the, in the Kindle Cash Flow uh, Facebook group. One of our models is we are each other's brothers and sisters, right? And the other thing is, one of our models is money loves speed. So just a few hours ago, I put up a post in a group and I said, hey, I want to interview some more of the Kindle Cashflow students. And I want to do it like ASAP. Actually, I didn't even put the ASAP in there. I just said, who's next? Who's next to be interviewed? And this guy, the young man, the gentleman that I'm going to be interviewing in just a couple of minutes, he immediately reached out and he said, hey, I'm down for it. And I asked him, I said, well, what day, what time works for you? I'm thinking later this week, next week, as most people usually will say, hey, let's do it next week. He said, tonight. So today we have a special guest, folks, Sam Cunningham. Sam, man, I appreciate having you here. You know, when I talk about Money Love Speed, it, it glosses over a lot of people's heads. You know, people really don't understand that and, and the fact that when you make quick decisions, not irrational decisions, but when you think about it, you make quick decisions, that helps you get to that place that you want to be a lot quicker. I've studied some of the most successful people on the planet that are living and that are dead. And one of the things, one of the key traits that they all have in common is being able to make decisions quickly. So. What made you say, yeah, let's jump into it, like right away when everyone else was like, hey, next week and later this week and... Well, I have to be off this off today and I, I, I my regular job is I work as a sous chef on a luxury ranch and I never even trained for that position. It was just something that was referred to me. I was in the restaurant business. So I've been working 14 hour days and so I have like five days off. So I'm like, well, anytime this week's fine, but actually now is best time is what I can think of because then I don't have to do plan tomorrow. I can do something else tomorrow. You know what I mean? Very cool, very cool. And, and that's, that's kind of how I do it too. I, I'm like, you know, let me do it now. And regardless of what that is, because then I can use tomorrow or later to do something else. So we're kind of, we, we got a few similarities that I've noticed here. We've got that. I noticed that you're also a musician yeah. Um, so guys, as, as many of you guys know, so um, I teach people how to how to create a monthly passive recurring income stream by publishing what I sell or what I like to call uh, digital real estate. And that's in the form of Amazon Kindle books. And Sam is one of our students here. So Sam, you're, you're going into like your journey in the music industry. And, and what do you do right now as far as as it relates to music? Well, I mean, I'm a singer songwriter. So what I was about to say uh, is that anybody who's a recording artist now is their own record label, unless you're signed to a big record label. So I just say, you know, and I produced, I produced uh, music on, uh, you know, iTunes and Spotify and some stuff. And I, I recorded an Astros fan song for Houston Astros. I know a lot of people cool. hate the Astros, but we, we recorded a song for them. They're the most hated team. But, um, you know, it's a passion of mine, but unfortunately, you know, it doesn't pay the bills. So, you know, I gotta do other things to do that, but I just love writing music and I'll continue doing that. In fact, I, I met a famous musician the other day. I met uh, Scott Terry from Red Wanting Blue. So we got to jam the other day, it was really cool. 
But, um, you know, I guess I'm a writer too, because I like to write my own songs. I'm a lyric guy. So actually, the, 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 the crazy thing is, I know you get people to outsource their writing, um, but I like to do it. So I, that's another thing. So I do outsource some of my writing with, as you've taught, you know, through Upwork, some of these other sites we use. I've got a few different ghostwriters. Man, I'm getting off topic, but. Uh, no, 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 you're good. This is because uh, I was just about to ask you that. So you, you're segueing perfectly. But I, I write music, and then also, um, we just talked about it. We're both uh, comic book fans, and yep. I. Uh, Growing up, I loved Conan, the Barbarian, and so I kind of, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm working on some fantasy stuff and uh, with the Kindle Cash Flow. It's kind of just a dream of mine anyway, so hey, it fits it's a lot of different uh, boxes, you know, for me. So, yeah. so before you got Kindle Cash Flow, were you a writer already, or was that something that was in the works? It, it was something I tried when I was a, you know, teenager, early 20s, and then I just kind of put it away for a long I hadn't even messed with it so and I'm 42 now so okay. I haven't touched it in years so this is a new journey for me I've been studying guys like Brandon Sanderson he's got a lot of classes online about uh fantasy writing different things like that but um you know my regular job I work as a sous chef at a luxury ranch and we work like 14 hour days sometimes and it's just busy and um, you know, I, I love my boss, but I also hate my boss. You know, it's okay, depending right. on the day, you know. And um, so, like I was telling you in the, in the message, I think this Kindle cash flow really gives me hope because I can work on this on part time and work on my fortune, as Jim Rohn used to say. I can work full time yeah. on my job to uh, to make a living, but I'm working on my fortune when I'm working on my Kindle cash flow because even if I get fired from my job or my my boss blows up on me one day and I walk out or something. Um, I have something coming in from another stream of income, which I'm really excited about. Yeah. Hey, you mentioned Jim Rohn, man. How, how long have you been following Jim Rohn? Because he's, I, I keep finding that we've got these similarities, one after the other, after the other. Jim Rohn was one of the first, I, I, I like to call him a personal development slash philosopher slash yeah. teacher that yeah. I came in contact with. I guess I got, kind of, you know, I've tried different businesses. Not a lot of them made money. They made a little bit of money, but one thing, they didn't make is when I wasn't there, they weren't paying me money. So when I wasn't pushing it, I usually wasn't getting money. What? Uh, so I, I reached out to different personal development coaches and stuff, and you know, they said listen to this guy. So I listened to him. And yeah, Jim Rohn was incredible. I love what he said. You know, uh, don't ask for things to be easier. Ask for you to be better. You know, uh, you know, don't ask for less challenges. You know, ask for uh, you know, just you get better. You know, it's like. A, you can't, uh, he has so many things he says that are awesome. And yeah. I, I found a book through um, one of the authors through um, Kindle Cashflow and, uh, by an author called Nate Pliskin. And he's got a book coming out and it's called, <laughs> I'm plugging this, it's called um, The Surest Way to Wealth. And he actually quotes Jim Rohn and um, he, he, he quotes, um, have you heard that, read that book, The Slight Edge? It's really similar to The Slight Edge with Jeff yep. Olson. It's those daily disciplines you do that lead to success. And it's just those slight errors in judgment you do over time that compound it, that lead to failure. So, and either way, good or bad, right? Yeah. So you do those daily disciplines. You know, I'm reading a book right now, Atomic Habits here, that I actually talked about in the group. Um, but this, this book reads along the same path, right? It's, it's all about building up those habits that, similar to what you just said, you do every single day and they help you to get better and better and better and ultimately push you to where you want to be. But by the same token, it helps you to break the bad habits that we're also doing every single day that's pushing us away from where we want to be. So for Slide Edge, you know, Jim Rohn. Um, now, this other book, The Surest Way to Walk, is, is that by... A Kindle Cash Flow member, someone that's yeah. in a group, or uh, yes, uh, Nate Pliskin. Uh, but he's a, uh, I think that's a pen name. But uh, but he, uh, he got, I got a beta reader. I was a beta reader for that book. It's really good. It's a, uh, it's um, real short. You know, probably about fifty pages long, and it's uh, got a bunch of good stuff. Basically, you know, I probably won't discover the next Facebook. You know, I won't probably invent that. I, I probably will not win the lottery. Right. So what else can I do? Well, I could probably do simple things over time that will build me cash flow coming in that I can create options, you know? You know, if I had five, ten thousand dollars coming in automatically on autopilot every month, then I could do a lot more music and I could do more charity work and I could do, you know, I could reach out to the poor more 
But unfortunately, you know, when I'm stuck 14 hours a day at a job that whether I love or hate it, you know, my options are limited, you know? Yeah. And, and you know what? That, I'm so glad you mentioned that, man, because when you have like income coming in, your creativity explodes as well. So you as a writer, right, as a musician, because you're not worrying about, man, I've got to go to work tomorrow, or if it's the weekend, I got to go to work on a Monday, right? Or, you know, my boss is going to be a pain today, or what type of mood is he in today? So with that said, so seeing the other people that are in the Kindle Cash Flow group, right, and seeing their successes, does that inspire you? Does that motivate you to see, like, you know, we've got one person saying, I just made 20000 this month, or I'm at 10000 a month, or I'm at you know, three thousand dollars a month. It does motivate me, and also it makes you feel like, man, I need to get off my button right now. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's it's a, uh, you know, everybody starts where they're at. You know, I've only published a few books, but I'm really excited about it. Uh, there are great people in the group on Facebook. To be honest with you, your course would be worth it just for the Facebook group because the people that reach out to you and show you, hey, kind of give you hands on, look, you need to uh, try this, or they give you feedback on stuff. And you know, you know, right now in our society, you know, we got like, uh, you know, it's died down a little bit, but we had the riots and we had the pandemic and shut down and everything. It's cool to see that people are basically the same. Like, you know what I'm saying? You're a black man, I'm a white guy. And there's there's black ladies in the group that have become like really good friends to me, like Spicy, I don't know her, her real name. She's really sweet. And uh, and we've, uh, we communicate regularly about gardening and things like that. And then it just shows that, you know, that we're all the same. You know, you work your life around to make your life a success. You didn't do that because you were lucky. You just did the right things in the right order that led you to success. And now you're giving people a hand up, but not a hand out, you know? Yes, there's a difference, right? So there's a difference. Yeah. And, and if you look, man, I'm glad you brought that up too. Cause if you look in a group, you've got people from all walks of life. I interviewed, um, a young lady, I think her name was Mikea last week from China. I don't know if you got to see that interview or not. I'm not sure, I don't think but so. I mean, from, you know, and, and then I interviewed another young lady, um, Kai from Malaysia. Mm -hmm. So you've got people all over the place. I interviewed Shannon who's over in the Midwest, right? So, and, and you've got black, white, young, mm -hmm. old, male, female, writers, non-writers, technical people, non-technical, people who have started businesses before, people who have no clue how to start a business, mm -hmm. right? So it's, when when I set out to, to create not only the product, but the group, the environment itself, I wanted it to be a positive environment, number one, mm -hmm. where people, regardless of who you are, Right, regardless of what you look like, regardless of, again, male, female, whatever. You can come in there and you just like, you're getting away from the rest of social media yeah. where you see all of the, the fighting and everything. Yeah, yeah. So you don't see that in our in our group. No, no, no. You know? You know so. Another thing I love about this Kindle cash flow thing is because we are moving from the industrial age to the information age. Now we're going to a different age, even more than the information age. And we're getting to a point where technology and stuff is meant to help people but really a lot of jobs are going to be eliminated there's going to be cars that drive themselves i mean we have uber now but there may not be in the future because cars may just pull up and you go somewhere in it i mean because the more technology has we're going to have people are going to have to find a way to make their finances and their life uh and i want to say I can't think of the right word, but you have to, you can't Maybe rely on the government to there, save right? you or society because jobs that were here yesterday may not be here in the future and we have to be smarter. And I love the fact that even though Amazon is this huge company, we have a platform where we can get in front of people. And I, I just think it's a godsend that uh, I got into the group when I did. And, uh, you know, I'm still learning things. You know, I've only been doing this for several months, maybe four or five months. And yeah. I've already seen some cash flow coming in, but I know it's not where... I want it to be. I mean, I have a small mailing list. I think I have like 450 people on my list, but I haven't even spent any money in advertising yet. I've just right. used lead magnets for that and and that's come in. And so I'm, I'm just excited to see what's gonna go on, going on. I'm sorry, rambling here, but I'm gonna keep keep pressing on. No, man, I, I think everything you said is good. So so you've got a mailing list of four or 500 people, right? You, yep, you, 450. You are publishing, is it sci-fi or? 
Okay, I, 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 I probably messed it all up. I probably did it all the wrong way. I think if you follow the course exactly, you'll have better results. But you know, I'm kind of a renegade. I'm kind of a maverick. And you can show me the way and I still might go off a little bit. So I, I did two pen names, which is okay. not suggested. But I have, uh, I, I, I published nonfiction starting because I want to see how the mechanics of everything work. And I just want to know like, how do you publish books on Amazon Kindle? What's it like? So I started with some nonfiction books and now I have three, two series that are almost finished in the fantasy fiction genre with go. a different pen name. So, but I decided to finish both series completely because they're all related. And I wanted to have them finished and edited before I released one of them because I didn't want one to be released and then I didn't have the two, three, four behind it. I do the same thing. Because I also I want to make sure it's a good quality book and has a good ending and I can promote the next one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to release one perma-free and then it's going to have a pre-sale offer at the end of the book because you can you can, you can can get per, part one and I'm going to try to make it perma-free and then part two is going to be, um, it's going to be pre-sale. It's going to be available pre-sale immediately when you get part one. And then I'm going to do them both like that. So you have your entire, you have an, I, I kind of follow the same thing. So what I'll do is I, I want my entire series done. Yeah. So, but I know what the quality is like, right? Because if you have good quality, then you got, listen, I still make money off of books that I published 11, 12 years ago. That's awesome. Because I wanted to make sure that they were going, they were quality, right? So if, if you've got good stuff, and like you said, you, you're making sure that the first book is right and then the entire series is right. So that when someone buys book one, they're more inclined to buy book two. And then yeah. because book two is good and it follows the same path, they're buying book three and so far. It, be, it yeah. becomes this domino effect. Yeah. So you have an entire series done already? Is that, is that okay, true? Well, well yeah. what I have is I have two series that I worked in. I hired a ghostwriter to write one series. Uh -huh. And you know, it's a three part series. Yeah. And he's finishing up part three right now. Part one and two are done. Yeah. Um, I, I met with some artists. I've already got the covers done for those. And then I, right now I'm writing a book funnel book for all of them because I need a free book in all of them. And so book one of the of the other guys series, the my Ghostwriter series, is going to have a same perma free, uh, same a uh, book funnel book in it, like uh, to to draw leads. But uh, it's a three-parter series, and, and um, the one that I'm finishing up is a three-parter, and I'm finished with part one and two. I've, I've got to finish part three. So, so there's two books that we need to finish in the, the end of their. I'm not even saying this right. Getting it out, I'm jumbling up. But no, no, you got it right. I, I'm just impressed, man, that you you've done all of this in a matter of uh, months. With your and also, I have five nonfiction books published, but um, but I learned a lot from that too. I made a lot of mistakes. So, so let's talk about those. The, the, the nonfiction books, did you write those or did you outsource them? Both. I, I tried both. I did some myself and I did some with uh, outsources. I did some biographies and I, I, I learned a valuable lesson is do not write a biography about a rich person who's alive right now. Write them about dead rich people. Gotcha. So, well, so, because the person that's watching, they want to know why. You just, that's a cliffhanger right there. Because if uh, if the person is rich uh -huh. and picky about their public image, they can appeal to Amazon to say they don't have the right to write this book. Even if I do have the right to do this, Amazon is not going to fight them on that. Not and that. Your book's going to get dropped and you could be in jeopardy if too many times that happens. So it's safer to write about people that are dead because if they've been dead for a while, like you could write a book about Albert Einstein and yeah. it's going to be fine. I think his grandchildren are not going to sue you or, or cause problems. Thomas but, uh, Edison, uh, yeah. Albert Einstein, anyone, yeah. you know, Ben Franklin, you know, those guys have been dead forever, right? You can, yeah, you and they got good them. information about their lives and you could just research it and you could come up with a short biography or something. So, but one thing I did, I had a book that got dropped from Amazon and I just sent it over to Draft Digital. I was like, hey, whatever. And I'm making money off it over there. Yeah. So, would I mean, you put it? Would, would you put it? I put it over to Drafted Digital. Gotcha. Okay. Very cool. Very cool. So I'm, I'm making money off of it still because the guy didn't. It wasn't a bad book. It wasn't a, it wasn't a mean book. It was just a, a mini biography. 
You got the content. You said, you know what, yeah. Amazon's giving me a problem. Let me put it over here on this other platform. I, I researched it or I hired, hired a lady to research. It's just journalism, basically. It's a guy's life story that he doesn't have a biography. Well, we took his information off the internet, off YouTube interviews and things like that. Yeah. We made a little journalistic biography about his life, you know? Yeah. Uh, I, so so what's, what's, your props, what's your publishing process like? So, so walk me through that for the person that's watching this, right? Because when, when I do these interviews, and the reason why I like to do these is because ev everyone takes the Kindle Castle course, but puts their own spin on it, right? So they'll use the foundation of basic principles of it. And like you said, you came in, you, you published nonfiction, right? And then you went in and you did a couple of other things and you've got, so everyone does it differently. So I like to hear how people do it. So what's your process like? How do you, do, do you research first? Do you have an idea? You're a creative guy, so maybe you might have an idea already or what? Okay, I got into the course and the course is great, the Kindle Cashflow course, but then I soon realized that once I got to this course, I'm not really going to learn this course or I'm not gonna get most out of it. If I just watch the course and do all the study right. from start to end, I'm not going to retain much of that. So I got about halfway through and I said, I got to publish a book right now. Okay. So I just- I wouldn't expect anything less from the guy who says, let's do the interview right now tonight. Yeah, so I I looked, uh, I, I just thought of topics that I thought were interesting to me. And so I started writing a book and researching it. And then I, then I had to figure out, okay, how do I upload it? How do I edit it? Is it any good? Can I do this? And right. so I hired an editor that I found off Upwork and, uh, and uh, she gave me some feedback and stuff, and I edited it. I think I, I learned how the process started, how to write it and stuff. So for me, okay, now this doesn't have to be for everyone. I definitely don't think it is, especially if you're a business-minded person and you're just about the money. But for me, I like a topic that I'm interested in. I start with the topic that I'm interested in, but then again, the research, if you do your research as in the course correctly, that's where you're gonna have your money, I think. But I like doing stuff that I'm interested in, so like I say, you need to do the research, but I, 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 I just went with something that was interesting to me. And then I published it and, uh, you know, I got mediocre results because I didn't have a list and I didn't have, uh, you know, I didn't do my research to figure out what was selling or hot, but I just did it. And I think, uh, from that standpoint, I started trying to, uh, market some stuff on, on, uh, Instagram and stuff, but okay. The writing process, I'm kind of getting off tra track. I just think, uh, Either I hire a ghostwriter or I write it myself. And uh, I don't know, I just, uh, I write a lot of my stuff with Google Chrome, uh, the, uh, uh, what do you call that? Uh, uh, Google Docs. Google Docs, I yeah. like it like that because if uh, something happens and my computer crashes, I still got the material. Yeah. And I can go back and forth from my Mac to my little uh, Samsung uh, portable laptop and I can work on it anywhere I'm at. I like doing that and uh, I've uh, tried different editors and different ghost writers. And um, I guess, you know, I was unemployed for a couple of weeks during the pandemic or months actually. So that gave me a chance to, to get, get active. But um, I, I kicked myself for not doing more because now that I'm working again, it's like, God, I, I had all that time. What did I do with it? You know? So, so speaking of that, so let me ask you a question here. So now you just mentioned the pandemic. And you see like all of these people that are, that are part of the Kindle Castro community that are taking the course and making money with it. And, and making money during the pandemic, right? Because this is not something that just started out of the blue. Like, is, is that an eye opener or what? Because to see that uh, here, you, you were someone that was affected employment wise because of the pandemic. Yeah. But then there's people that are taking the Kindle Cash Flow course, they're publishing this digital real estate, they've got their intellectual property and it's still making the money. Like, that goes back to what you were saying about industries changing, people being put out of business or out of work because of automation and technology and things like that. I think for anyone that's watching this, it's, it's really important to see how even with an, a pandemic, even with businesses, major multi-million and billion dollar brands going out of business, People still read and, you know, when things like this happen, they read even more so. Like I saw myself shoot up. Mm -hmm. Seth Taylor, who's in the group, he said he saw, his, almost everyone I've spoken to yeah. has saw themselves shoot up during the pan pandemic. 
Yeah, I mean, it's so right on. I think that when I saw your video, it had to be God or something because it's like, it is so timely. It's a very timely business right now. And I yep. can't wait to get into doing uh, audible books too. I, I need it. That's, that's the area I need to get going to. I'm, I'm, I'm a recording artist, so I understand the recording process. So I'm, I'm going to try again, like an idiot to do it myself, but maybe I'm smarter. I get somebody else to do it. But to me, I can, I think, I know I can do it. So I'm going to try to do that. But, I think uh, yeah, it, it's so awesome. This course has been so awesome for, for this time period right now for what we're in. Like I say, what, how many business can you do from home, really from home, without actually having to go face to face with somebody else? Because a lot of times home-based businesses re require you to go call somebody, go meet yeah. with somebody, go be with somebody, have to make a sale. And this is just really, you can do it from home in any place. Yeah, so, so so did you get started right away? Like after after you got the course, did you get started right away, or did you take some time off and then jump? No, in? I just started read, watching it and uh, and started getting starting as soon as possible because I needed to. I was like, I I don't know what I'm gonna do in the future. And you know, unemployment didn't kick in for like a month or two, so we were like sitting around going, what's gonna happen to us, you know? And I think you know one thing is really cool about your group. Uh, you did a call uh, shortly after things got bad with the pandemic, and just really shows your heart because you were talking to people about stuff besides Kindle cash flow, like how's your family doing? What are you going to do to prepare in case this happens and stuff? And how's your faith, your religion? And yeah, and, and that, that just shows your heart. I think that's really awesome. But I think at the time I was really frustrated. So I didn't want to hear about this. So how do we do this now? I, I yeah. can't be listening to all this. I felt, felt like it was a kumbaya moment. And I was like, okay, people, we're all holding hands here digitally, but you know, but uh, let's get it going. Let's get the money making here. Yeah. Yeah, right. but it, it's really great. Hey, one other thing I want to say too about this course that's really great is, um, and I know you're out here just plugging your course, but I'm self-employed because even though I work at a, uh, uh, I work as a sous chef at a luxury ranch, uh, the way they pay me is 10.99. You know. Okay, so, so you're I, an independent contractor here. I'm an independent contractor, so okay. I have to pay self-employment taxes every year. You know what I'm saying? And there's no messing around with that. They, the government wants their money. Yeah. So the cool thing about this course is everything I'm doing in this course is basically free on my taxes because this is coming out of money that I would have to pay the government anyways. So like ghost writers, the course itself, uh, editors, uh, marketing, uh, software, computer that I might be using for the course and everything. And so all this stuff is just like basically I would be just, just giving this money to the government, which is going to just blow it on something else yeah. <laughs> you know so it really is a blessing i was thinking about this a lot it's like uh you know it's a it's a really blessing and hopefully i'll do so well that the government i'll have to pay you know <laughs> but, oh man that's the right mindset so both of these things right so of course with, with you being um a business owner so regardless of what type of business right you're a 1099 independent contractor so it's yeah. that right off and, yeah. and you write off the, the course you write off your, your graphic designers you're out your freelancers yeah. you're writing off i mean you go and you buy another course to study marketing or whatever it might be yeah. that's a write-off if you yeah. start to run some ads that's a write-off everything yeah. is a write-off right yeah. so that's a great point an awesome point i'm glad you brought that up there so what's your plan now what are, are you looking to what, what's next with Sam? Do you go in and create more series? Are you going to start publishing more of your books now? How frequently are you are you looking to publish books now? Well, I'm really excited because I think the fantasy fiction is going to do probably out dominate the the, the uh, nonfiction. I just think that market. Oh, time, yeah. I think it's going to be bigger. But I, you know what's cool? Like I uh, I set up uh, my payments from Amazon to go to a separate bank account. Mm -hmm. in my normal bank account because I just want it to go in there and I don't even want to think about it. I want to just to store it up, you know what I'm saying? So I can invest it and do things like that. Because, you know, it's just, it is really cool. It's really cool having that income coming in where I'm not working, but it's, I am working, but it's just coming in kind of semi-passively once we get the books up. But I'm definitely going to, I really, here's the deal. It's like, I, I'm kind of sporadic here in my thinking. So forgive me. I'm a little bit. No, this is good, this is good stuff, Sam. You, you're good, man. You, you keep it going. But I, but I want to say, look, I'm 42, and uh, and people say that I'm very handsome and young looking. I, I accept that. I, I accept that. But damn, but, what are you, a Capricorn or Aquarius? What 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 are I'm you? I'm a Pisces. I'm a Pisces. But what You're, I was gonna oh, say, okay. I was gonna say is that for for the most part, before this course, my life as a musician, I didn't see an inroad to making uh, making it big as a musician. I love it, but I don't see myself as maybe one day if I get you know the right song, the right person. 
at my job as a sous chef, I don't see myself as becoming, we did meet Gordon Ramsay, that was pretty cool, but wow. I don't see myself as being, you know, financially prosperous and anything could happen to me, I could get laid off, you know, nothing. Yeah. But I feel like with this course, if I just stay the course, keep publishing books, mm -hmm. the way things are going, they're gonna keep gradually building and building and building. And if I just put the work in and if I, if I, and, it, and the good thing about the group too, is like, if I'm doing something wrong, that's not paying off, I got somebody in the group I can ask about, say, hey, how come I'm not getting the sales here or whatever? Yeah. And, uh, but I really see myself, I like publishing and writing fantasy and I, and I like uh, publishing. I'm gonna just keep doing, I'm gonna keep building. I'd like to have 50 books as soon as possible. Very smart, very, very 50 smart. books is a good number of like, and I think once I get to a place where I maybe have five or $10,000 coming in every month, I might think about doing this like, all the time <laughs> yeah yeah no, it, it definitely makes sense you know it's 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 one of those things where like when i got to the ten thousand dollar a month level right that's when i really started to say man okay i can push this thing like sky's the limit right so as you start to get to and i was all over the place when i got started i was just doing everything doing just a bunch of different things so i wasn't really focused but when i got to that $5,000 a month level, I was like, oh man, this is awesome. And I kind of coasted for a while. And then when I got to the $10,000 a month level, I was like, okay, I really need to push this thing because the sky's the limit. So now, so you've got your series, right? You've got your nonfiction books, you've got your fiction books here. What's your process like when it comes to coming up with an idea? How, how are you coming up with your ideas here for books? Okay, well, like I say, not everybody can do this, but I had an idea for a fantasy novel a long time ago. And I and people said, that's great, but you know, whatever, you know. And so I had that whole thing. And so I'm kind of a writer. I have a, I have a huge world plot that I have going on for maybe a couple more books. But I think for finding like the nonfiction or stuff, I just, uh, I, I have, I find a niche that I think is interesting. And then I try to look and figure out how can I like find something else off that niche, like something that's maybe detail more or something like something that's like i had a book that uh i i wrote for a lead funnel book that seemed to be pretty good and it was like just how to tell if a girl's into you and that book seemed to be i don't know it was kind of a cool idea i don't i don't know how i come up with my ideas i don't know that's not a very good answer dude some some of my best-selling books are dating books Would you yeah believe it or not so i actually have um so 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 some of the first books that I started out with are music related books, right? Yeah. Because at that time I was in the music industry. Um, and then I started out with what was that? Personal development. So yeah. that was next because I just and similar to what you said, right? Books that you would enjoy writing. Right. Um then I, I started to look at like dating and things like that. So I, I created a couple of books on how to date, right? And I kind of broke those down into different sub subtopics, right? So how to date in general, which is very wide, but then how to date a Midwestern uh, lady or how to date someone from uh, Germany or how to date someone from Australia and, and just really niched it down. And oh, that's really clever, that's really cool. Yeah. yeah, because I took that same content, it allowed me to take that same content and use the basic framework of it, but just add to it and change it up. And I was able to, to, to get a lot of books done that way. So I was able to get like 10 books done really quickly in the span of just a couple of months. And at that time, you know, I was moving really slow because I was just new to this. I didn't have a Kindle Cash Flow course to refer to, and I'm just working my way through it. You are uh, the Kindle Cash Flow course. You're like the beta tester of that course. <laughs> that was it. But the, I, so, so the reason why I'm going back to this is, I have made so much money, maybe I shouldn't even be sharing this in an interview, off of a dating niche that is, it is not yeah. funny. Like dating for, it's our Achilles heel, right? As guys, we buy anything that will help us to get the girl. Yeah, that's funny. So that's yeah, it. I, mean, I, I, I love this, uh, this, this world, uh, the, uh, writing world and stuff and there's so much so deeper i can go with this because i i can't wait to do the uh the audible book so i feel like that's going to be a big thing too 
So, yeah. so neat. But, you know, when I was selling music, that's the thing is like getting somebody to interested to listen or buy is so difficult in that genre. I guess you could do it maybe with Spotify. I feel, I feel like maybe being, we're both in the music background, that yeah. did you find that, you know, when you went to this, you're like, this is way easier than selling music. Oh, it's tough, man. Selling music and, and at that time, um, yeah, it, it's super tough. At that time, I was selling music in a CD format, so all yeah. of the music was on, it was right. tough. Yeah. To get someone to give you 10 bucks for a CD. Yeah. Seven yeah. bucks for a CD. It was insane. Right. Now yeah. you're loving your music. You think it's the best thing yeah. you know, on earth, but you know, yeah. yeah, it's tough. Everybody, so it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a tough gig. I think being that we're both from that, we realize that this is so much more doable than yeah. that. I want to still do music because I love it, and maybe one day something will hit. But I mean, uh, that's why I'm very optimistic about this Kindle cash flow, Kindle publishing. And, you know, I think that. There's other platforms besides Amazon, but I feel like Amazon has the traffic. They do. They have the traffic and they, and you see the thing with Amazon is they have a brand, right? Mm -hmm. They've been around, man, Amazon has been around for over 20 years. Do you believe that? It's crazy. crazy. Man, if I bought Amazon when it first started, man. <laughs> you see that? So, so Amazon, did you, you bought Amazon? Stuff? No, I wish. Uh -huh. Oh, no, I got gotcha. you. I was going to say, man, that's insane. Yeah. All right. Um, but yeah, so they, they, they have the traffic, they've got the brand recognition, right? They have the um, marketing budgets. They put money into everything. I saw an Amazon uh, television commercial the other day. There's Amazon pop-up stores all over the place. You know, so it's definitely the place to be on. Now that doesn't mean that you should ignore the other channels. As you just said earlier, you, you publish some of your content on another channel and you make money from that. Yeah. which is very cool. How many words are your books right now? Like how many pages words do you go for? Well, you know, that's a good question because I think I started trying to do the 10,000 words. I feel like it's kind of short. That's it. So I, my ghost writers, I, I've been, I bumped it up to like 15,000 words for per part. And I didn't call it a book. I call it part one, part two, part three, because I mean like, a, so like a, uh, like in the world of fiction, I, uh, I think mid, mid, mid grade is about 70,000 or 50,000 words, I think, in, in, a, in a mid grade book, but um, that's in fantasy. So uh, it's really a short read, but um, I, right now, I think most of my parts are about 15 to 16,000 uh, words. And yeah. I'm, I think I'm, and some of them are like 20,000. On the nonfiction, I think the biggest book that I published was 30,000 words. Um, but, but, um, so I'm wondering about that 10, 15,000 range, right? Which is I think bad. even more, maybe 20,000, probably future going. I think I'm going to maybe focus on more, uh, longer. I'm thinking about doing a standalone book that might be like be 70,000 words. And yeah. maybe I don't know if you think it's a good idea or not following this series. So that might be a sequel to one of the series, but be like a standalone book. I'm not sure if that's a good idea or not. What is that a good idea? Ty? I I don't know. I mean, are you are you going to spin that off? So it depends. Are you looking to spin it off? So yeah, it's going to be a, it's it's going to be a continuation of of part one. And then what I did was since I had a a, a, a Ghost Rider write a completely different uh, story series, yeah. but it's in the same fantasy world that I'm in. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some of his characters and put them in my later book. So the people who read the book they'll be go, oh, I know her. And and, and I'm going to do th things like uh, maybe it's 50 years later. And she's in my book now, and she's an old lady before she was a young woman, and so I think it'll be kind of interesting to do. And, uh, you and never I just know, man. To... I, I would throw it out there. You never know. You know, you never know. I'm, but I'm do you think that longer out. books are, are are a good way to go sometimes? So with the longer books, you got you definitely got to get like the Kindle Unlimited, right? You're gonna get those reads, so you'll make money from that as well. And then if you start to get people that are attracted to it and that are buying it, mm -hmm. right outside of that, then you've got a double whammy there. So it's, and then it's I could do uh, maybe, uh, maybe hard band, but I don't, I gotta have the, uh, the paperback, or whatever, but you gotta have, you gotta have the customers for that. Yeah. So speaking of customers, right? So one of the things normally for a business, one of the hard things for people to kind of get right in their head is, you know, I've got to build up this list. I've got to have traffic. I've got to get customers. And one of the things that we teach in regards to building, um, your customer base is to build out an email list. Have you found that following the course, you've been able to build up your email list, at least get one or two individuals on your list? Yes, actually, I was really excited because I got, uh, I did a book funnel, I did some book funnel um, 
promotions and we shared promotions and those did really well and uh and i did uh i i put the the book funnel link in uh my books yeah. so um kind of flows like at certain times i really was getting a lot of subscribers and it's kind of died off again so i need to do something different uh, yeah. but, uh, but uh yeah i feel like those permit free books help get new customer or new uh new emails i think i think they do i need Very to probably cool. like, track that more very cool. All right, so where's your list at right now? What size are you at? We, I think you said something like 400 or? 450. And I, I haven't spent any money on advertising yet. I, I was selling life insurance before a few years ago, and uh, and uh, I, I actually uh, ticked off Facebook because I, well, it was my fault. I, I uh, ran up my, my Facebook ad account, and then I took a long time to pay them. I didn't pay them right away. They didn't like that. So they, 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 so I got my, my ad account suspended. So I was like, how do I do this if my ad account's suspended? Hey, yeah. if, if your ad account is still suspended, reach out to me after this interview. I've got a way to get it back. Okay, thanks. Right. So definitely. So so now you've got, man, that's pretty cool though. You've got 400, 450 people on the email list. With I didn't spend no any money on it. No, no advertising yet. No. no advertising at all. Very, very cool. Have you found that what we teach in the course in regards to building up your list, have you found that that's what has helped you or? Yeah, it has, and I, I think um, you know, I, uh, I I'm sure there's even more training that I haven't gotten in the inner circle and stuff that I probably probably detail it more. But uh, in the group, they help has helped a lot too with the Facebook group that people talking about perma free books and stuff. So uh, really? I, I think I, I, I um, I'm kind of going back and forth, but I think it really works. All right, really cool. So, hey, if you're listening and you just heard Sam talk about he's got 400, 450 people on his email list, there's so many people that are out there that are having a hard time building out their email list. Sam's done it with no advertising, 400, 450 people on his list in a couple of months. If you want to learn how to get started with Kindle Publishing, visit kindlecashflow.com forward slash three steps, kindlecashflow.com forward slash three steps to watch a free three-part video that shows you the exact processes of how you can get started. So now, Sam, you've got these digital assets, right? This digital real estate that makes you money. Um, once you once you load your books up there, you're making money. How does that make you feel, man? You know, realizing that we can either trade time uh, for money, which is what we've all been taught, right? There's no shame in that. There's nothing wrong with that. But there's also another side of things where you can have this intellectual property that makes you money while you're doing other things to make money. How does that, how does that feel? It's great. And I got to tell you, uh, you know, I think uh, Jeff Olson said this, the money you make from your business, your part-time business is so much more, uh, you get so much more enjoyment out of that. The, the, the yeah. feedback of pride of saying, Hey, I did this on my own and stuff. So yeah, I'm excited. I, I know I'm in kind of a, I'm a, I'm still like a, uh, I'm like a little, uh, I'm like a little guppy right now. I'm small. I'm not, I'm not big, but I'm going to keep growing. You know what I'm saying? I think it, it, I don't think we've seen anything yet. It's only been five months working on this. I think I got started back in, maybe it's been longer than five months, about March or May or something like that. But as soon as the pandemic happened, it seemed like I was in this thing. So probably about April or May I got started. So no, that's fine, man. And what we're going to do is I like to bring everyone back too. I like to bring you know, if you're open to it, I like to bring you back in six months to find out where you're at and, and you know, we, we can compare this interview to that interview. And I think it'll be awesome just to see the growth there. I think with your personality and your willingness to just get it done, I think you have a huge future uh, in the works there. So with that said, I want to put you on a spot. I want to put you on the spot here before we close this out. Give the viewer or the listener right now just one secret tip as it relates to what you're doing with Kindle Publishing that other people may not be doing. As I said before, everyone has their own little, little spin that they put on it. What's that one thing? It could be something major, it could be something small that you're doing that, that would give this person that's watching this right here a little bit of extra value or confidence or, you know, willingness to stick with it. Well, I don't, I don't know if there's uh, just one thing, but I will say invest in yourself uh, because you are going to probably put money out for a little while and not see the full result of that money. I mean, I'm talking about you, you, you're worth it. Go ahead and invest in yourself. That means um, just sign up for the course. I'm not, I'm not, uh, 
Ty didn't ask me to tell, them, to tell people this, but I'm just saying, go ahead and sign up for the course. You know, once you have a plan of action, take action, hire a ghost rider, just, just, just do it. And things won't be smooth or perfect. Things might be bumpy. Uh, you're going to learn some things. You may not hire the perfect ghost rider the first time. You might go, this, this isn't that good, but you need to start doing it. And like I said, I'm in a good spot because pretty much anything I've invested in this, I'm, I'm, I'm guaranteed to win because it's right off my taxes. You know what I'm saying? But on top of that, um, I think making the investment every month, if I didn't just do it and I thought, well, it's not a perfect time. We're in a pandemic. I don't know if I should spend the money right now. I, I would be very depressed right now if I if I didn't have this going on. You know what I'm saying? If I was just, you know, I'm going to be working this job and who knows, I might get fired. The economy would go down and what am I going to do? You just have to invest in yourself and just every, you know, you need to have a goal. If you're, if you're going to uh, publish a book, you need to say, okay, either I'm going to write it or I'm going to have to hire a ghost writer to write it. And this is going to be my budget and I'm going to go ahead and do this. And you're going to have to figure out how much am I willing to spend every month on myself. If it's just a, all I can afford is maybe you know, one book a month because I need to hire a ghostwriter to do this and an editor. Well, you just put that money aside and just do it. Do it every month. Just do it. Just put it out there. Put, put cast your bread upon the waters and let it return to you later. But if you don't do it, it's just going to be, you're, you're never going to have a perfect time. You're going to be saying, well, I couldn't do it because I couldn't afford it or I couldn't. And I, I just, uh, it's been a good decision for me. I'm really, I'm really happy that I took action and I, and I started, you know, I'm yeah. glad I'm not sitting right now thinking, oh, I got to write that first book. I'm glad I've already done that. I'm glad it's out of the way. Well, you got to do it. It's scary. You just do it. Just start write that first book or get somebody else to write that first book. But do it. Man, that's a, that's a beautiful thing right there. It's a much different place, right? So listen, guys, if you're watching this and you want to get started with Kindle Publishing, visit kindlecastflow.com forward slash three steps. Also, make sure that you go in and subscribe to the YouTube channel for your chance to win some of these cool prizes that we talked about earlier. We've got Sam here. We're definitely going to bring Sam back. I love the energy. I love the positivity, positivity here. And I love the fact that he just, you know, he just jumps into this thing. He just said, I'm going to start. You know, there's so many people that could have done the exact same thing. And we're, listen, we're, we're at a point where we're in a pandemic, right? We don't know what's going to happen next. We have no clue. Yep. But the fact that you started and there's a lot of uncertainty with that says something special about you. So if you're watching this and you haven't started, go ahead and get started and um, comment, subscribe, share this video, and we'll see you on the next one. Thank you, Sam. Thank you, Ty. Thank you.